Hi, this is Greg Benz with another quick Photoshop tutorial on how you can take an image like this that's full of people and turn it into a finished image like this that just really features the architecture or whatever you're shooting without moving foreground objects. So in the original scene here at the Hermes building in downtown Tokyo, you can see as I flip through here, there's a lot of people and I was shooting midday. The light was great with overcast light. Uh, love the way that the light was shining through the glass blocks in the building, uh, but I just never could get uh, a scene free of people. Uh, it's you know downtown Tokyo midday. That's just kind of the way it is. And I waited for about 15 minutes for that perfect moment. It never showed up. So what I did instead was I captured a series of identical images shot on a tripod with a remote shutter release. So I have the same scene perfectly aligned, and the only thing that's changing here are the people. And we're going to use that to our advantage because Photoshop can look at this and figure out, all right, if you know five of the seven images um, show you know this uh, you know this elevator in the background here instead of some other scene with a person walking in front of it like this guy, then it knows to use the elevator and not this person. So it's going to take these seven images and take all the best parts by essentially you know taking what's most common. Uh, and give you the clean image without people, even though I never captured that image. So first things first, I wanted to do everything I could within Lightroom here. So I made some uh, adjustments to the tonality and clarity, boosted the saturation a bit, um, made some adjustments to uh, the, the lens settings here. I, I was using a tilt shift lens, uh, didn't get it exactly the way that I wanted. So I made a couple of small tweaks, but it was a big improvement um, using a, a uh, wide angle uh, 24 millimeter here with the tilt shift really did um, help make this image, but I did have, make, have to make a couple tweaks. So here was the original image before Lightroom adjustments and you can see a dramatic improvement in terms of just the, uh, the color and contrast and pop of the image. So that's a great starting point. And I'm simply gonna take all of these images by hitting Command A to select all of them and then right click and I'll send them to Photoshop by choosing Edit In open as layers in Photoshop. And when I click on this, it's going to now take all seven of these images, load them up into Photoshop and put them into a single file where each of the images is a separate layer in the image. And this process does take usually a couple of minutes when you have a bunch of large images like this off my D800, D810 that is. Um, and so I'm gonna simply jump ahead to the finished state so you don't have to watch the paint dry. Okay, so at this point we've got all the images loaded up into Photoshop and as I mentioned, each image is a separate layer and if I just turn these off to look through, we can see that they are in fact the original images and a, a couple things to note. So obviously the people are moving around, but that's not it. You know, if we look at the glass blocks here, um, that's changing a little bit with the lighting conditions. Um, and then this metal sculpture here is really moving a lot. Every single frame is different. So that will be a little bit of an issue when we're done here, and I'll show you how to fix that later, but just wanted to note that change. So we're gonna select all the images here, and because I shot on a tripod with a remote shutter release, everything's perfectly aligned. I don't need to make any adjustments, but if I did have to, uh, to change these, I would go to Auto Align Layers. That would be the key to getting all my images aligned first. Um, but I don't need that here, so we're going to jump right ahead to Convert for Smart Filter. So under the Filter menu, Convert for Smart Filters, when I click on this, it's going to stack all of these into one smart object, and we can then take the, the next step we need. And this process, again, takes a few seconds, so I'm going to jump ahead to the finished state. Okay, and so now we have our smart object. Everything is stacked in here, ready to go. And we want to go up to Layer down to Smart Objects, oops, Smart Objects, down to Stack Mode, and we're gonna look for Median. So each of these is sort of a different math operation. If we chose, you know, Maximum, it would give us the brightest pixel, Minimum would give us the darkest pixel. Uh, if we choose Mean, it would be the average, it would just kind of blend everything together. Median is basically gonna look for the thing that's most popular, what, what pixel was most common across these images. So I click on that, and median stack mode is going to just work magic on this image. So we can see on the layer that was visible on top, these people here. And in the second when this is done running, they will be completely gone from the image. And so there you have it. We have now gotten rid of the people in the background here. 
Uh, looks really good. That looks like there may be a little bit of something here. I'm going to zoom in and just kind of check my background. And there are a few little bit of artifacts here. So I would want to clean this up uh, with a clone stamp tool. So I can just create a new layer. I'll just call it clone. And I'm going to hit the J key to load up my healing brush. I'm going to turn off a line. So um, by doing this every time I click, I'll be sampling from the same starting point. So this is just going to make sure I don't start pulling in other weird parts of the wall like I did there a second ago. So that looks pretty good to me. I could spend a little bit more time on it if I wanted to, but I think that looks really good. So that just kind of cleaned up a little bit of that noise in the background there. Um, and so let's take a look at what we've done. So going from... Um, right before we had clicked on everything here was the image with the tourists and then now we've removed them and that foreground looks really nice um, however of course this metal doesn't look so hot because it's been moving in every single image some parts of it are showing through the tile other parts are showing you know the metal was reflecting stuff um, here you can see multiple layers of it um, so we need to fix that and what I want to do to fix that is to jump back to Lightroom and I'm going to find an image that looks really nice for that sculpture and as I flip through these I like this one. It doesn't have any kind of funky reflections. The metal looks really nice and so I'm simply going to send this over to Photoshop as well and we'll just copy it over as a layer onto this image. So now we'll just copy this by hitting Command A to select all, Command C to copy, go back to my image here, I'm going to hit Command V to paste, and we've now taken that single image and put it on top of our blended image. So we've got the, uh, the good foreground uh, on the bottom, and on top here we've got this sculpture looking the way we want. So we just need to simply blend these together, and because this middle zone is um, very clean in both images, this is really simple. So I'm just going to make a kind of a generous selection around the sculpture here. And using my uh, Lumenzia panel, hit the mask button. That will simply load the selection onto this top layer, feather that selection. So very smooth. And you can see going from before to after that we've got this sculpture looking great. If, uh, if you're not using Lumenzia, you can simply take that selection click down here to add a mask and with that mask you can double click it and choose a feather amount here you can slide this around where you want it so that's how you can kind of generate your own if you're not working with Lumenzia but you just want this selection with a little bit of a feather to keep it smooth and that is how we uh, get rid of all these tourists in the foreground here so last step I would just simply check around for any sort of blemishes um, any sort of uh, error. If you had a bunch of people who are walking through the same part of the image, that is a watch out. Make sure you don't have anything looking kind of funky there. So at this point, everything is looking great. I think we can call that a finished image. I could just save it the way it is. However, um, because we've blended now seven images plus an extra layer um, for that, it's, it's getting to be a pretty large uh, file here, you know, 415 meg. Um, I really don't need this anymore. I'm comfortable that everything looks good. So I'm going to simply flatten the image and that's taking it down um, to 198 meg. So we saved over half the file space there. So that's just kind of a nice little finishing touch. I think it looks great and I'm going to save that as my final image.